yesterday, I hit a milestone in my life. Uh, I actually ran a marathon yesterday, believe it or not. Yeah, believe it or not. I normally, the only two times I would run is if somebody was chasing me or if I was running to the dinner table. It's the only two times I'm actually going to run. But um, um, I got, there were some people that came along my life and they were asking me like, hey man, you know, you should start exercising, start living a more healthy life because I was kind of going through some uh, health problems or whatnot, and I was kind of hearing it, but I really wasn't hearing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were saying it, but it really wasn't ringing a bell for me. I was like, you know, I'm going to do me, I'm going to eat good, I'm going to put my feet up when I can, and that's it, right? And um, I had this, about four guys come to me and say, hey, uh, Frank, you know, you, you know, you really, really need to start thinking about, you know, the longevity of your life. You have children, you know, that type of deal. And I'm like, man, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a fresh 40. You know, I'm a fresh 40. You know, not like, you know, I'm a nice, fresh 40-year-old, and I'm a little older than that, but that's okay. But anyway, um, <laughs> but I'm, we're going to leave it there. But, you know, I thought, I'm okay, I'm good. And um, I went to the doctor, and the doctor was like, yeah, you need to start really, really thinking about um, how you want to live the rest of your, your life, you know. And it got real. So um, I had these gentlemen start speaking into my life and they started telling me some things. And there was three things that really stuck out to me while they were telling me. And it, well, they, they gave me purpose of why I should run and work out. And then they gave me direction on how to do it. But more importantly, they gave me a lot of peace. And that peace bred a lot of faith and resolve to do it. Because at first it was like, man, if I start this, I'm going to have to keep doing this on a regular basis. <sighs> I'm just keeping it real with you, okay? And I thought to myself, this is going to take a lot for me to do. This is a real life change. So in order for me to do this, I'm going to have to have faith and I'm going to have to get enough peace within me to do it. Well, as they asked me to, to, to minister or to preach, I started thinking about the, that moment because I knew that I had to run this marathon that I'd been working on for the next, I mean, last four months, and I knew I'd been trying to eat right, and, you know, I was do, trying to do all the things, but I still knew that I had to run that 13.1 miles. So, um, I, I was thinking about why I was doing it. And I got to thinking about these men that were in my life that started speaking in my life, and they really, really were shepherding me. And that's what I'm going to talk to you today about is, you know, we talk about, you know, the powerful prayers that we've been, this series, and it's been an unbelievable series. I'm telling you, I would go back, I would look at it online, it's an unbelievable series. But I started thinking about the power in a shepherd's prayer. And those three things jumped out to me. A, 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 a shepherd's prayer is always going, should always give you those three things. It should give you purpose, it should give you direction, and it should give you peace. And when we jump into this, you know, we're going to think about, you know, am I a shepherd? Are you a shepherd? That's the question that I would ask. Do you see yourself as a shepherd? Listen, I know a lot of times we think as a shepherd as position, right? So the position is, if I'm a pastor, then I'm a shepherd. If I'm a teacher, then I'm a shepherd. If I'm a coach, I'm a shepherd. But let me ask you this. The guy that works on the assembly line at Eminem Mars, is he a shepherd? Absolutely he is. Absolutely he is. And I don't want you guys to think that you don't live this life and you don't have to shepherd people because you are with your life one way or the other. And we're going to see the power when we jump into this. We're going to see the power of Moses' prayer while he's shepherding his people in Psalm 90. Now, one of the things that I, I, I thought about is when I was asking myself that question, do we see ourselves as shepherds? Well, this, in the scriptures in First John or in John chapter 21, 15 through 17, and I'll paraphrase it for you. Jesus asked Simon Peter three times, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? First time, Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. Second time, yes, absolutely, Lord, no, yes, Lord, I love you. Third time, Lord, you know all things. Yes, you know that I love you. And he responded to him, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. In prayer, one of the things that I want us to understand is in prayer, when we are praying that shepherd's prayer, which is a prayer outside of yourself. It helps minimize, it helps minimize your own circumstances that you're dealing with. 
See, for me, I'm gonna tell you what happened. I was so engulfed in my own situation, uh, my own health situation, that I really could not see what it took to really live a life, a healthy field life. I couldn't really see it. And then there were people praying for me. There were men that were praying for me and speaking into my life. And guess what? Yesterday, I accomplished that feat, 13.1 miles like this. Hey, I was crying the whole way. I was crying the whole way. I cried the whole way. Just ask Michael Head, I cried the whole way. But guess what? The whole 13.1 mile, I was just running and I was thinking about this message and I was preaching this message and it helped the time pass by because it was tough. But I'll tell you something. During that time I was running, people were on the sideline cheering. They were speaking, they were cheering. Good job, I don't know these people, I've never seen these people. They were driving by in cars, I had no idea. But what I felt was, I felt like I was being shepherded to complete the task. So even though I wanted to, I got tired and I wanted to give up, but those, those high fives and those good jobs carried me to the end. Why do I say all that? Why do I give you guys all that? Because I want you to understand something. Everywhere you go, you're a shepherd. And your prayer life should resemble, re- resemble that. Um, I heard a quote from a Penn State professor, and she's a believer. Her name is Heather Holman. And it says, she said, sent people have a rich theology of place. A rich theology of place. Listen, man makes plans and God orders our steps. Where you are, whether you're at work, whether you're at home, whether you're at church, whether you're on the baseball field, basketball field, no matter where you are, guess what? God has placed you there. And that's, uh, listen, and it's important that you understand that because you will understand something. If you, if you get that, that theology or that understanding of, hey, I've been sent here, where you're at, you'll make a difference. You'll pray differently. Why? Because it won't be circumstantial. It won't be, oh, well, I'm only here because. No, I'm here because God sent me here. It won't just be because, watch it, it won't just be because, well, you know what, I don't have no other options, so this is just where I'm at. It won't just be that. What it will end up being is it will be an assignment. And when you have an assignment, you will pray differently. You'll pray differently. I guarantee you, you'll pray differently. And what it'll look like, it's what it'll look like. It'll look like the people around you and the people that God has sent you to, you'll be able to see them. See, right now, when you go into certain situations, you really can't see them because you got you on your mind. And that's the power of a shepherd's prayer because a shepherd's prayer gets your eyes off of you and your circumstances, and guess what they do? They get them on the right people. So now, Lord, guess what, Lord, this ain't about me. This is about your sheep. Because you told me, and John, you told me, hey, if you love me, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Moses understood that, guys. We're going to jump into Psalms 90, but Moses really understood that. And he understood it, watch this, he understood it to the point that he started praying for them knowing their outcome. He's praying, listen, listen, when we get over into Psalms 90, go to Psalms 90, uh, we'll start in verse 12. We'll go through 12 through 17 is where we're really going to go. But, um, and they say, this is just so I can give you a little background, they say that uh, Psalms 90 was uh, one of the first Psalms ever written, okay? And uh, Moses, it's the, the oldest Psalms, and Moses wrote it about, they say about 3,500 years ago. And... Um, when Moses wrote this, when Moses wrote this, this, uh, uh, this, this prayer, one of the things that you can understand is that he's thinking about his people. When you look at that, when you look at verse 12, it says, so teach us to number our days that we may get, get a heart of wisdom. Teach us. Teach us. If you go back into Numbers uh, 14 and 19, um, uh, Moses is praying to God and he's asking the God, like, spare them for their disobedience, Lord. And the Lord, guess what he says? He says, yes. He says, because of you, I will pardon them in uh, 19 and 20. He says that for you, uh, because of uh, your prayer, I will pardon them. Say, I'll pardon them. But they won't see the promised land. You know, I'll pardon them, but they won't see the promised land. So Moses is praying a prayer 
This, and you really got to get this. Moses is praying a prayer that he knows the outcome to. Man, that was so powerful to me. That was extremely powerful to me because I have been in a position, and this is probably none of you guys, this is just a me thing, y'all probably have never done this before, but have you stopped or told yourself, you know what, man, I ain't, I ain't gonna keep praying for him. I'm not gonna keep praying for her, you know why? Because she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing, he knows what he's doing, he's choosing this. I'm, my prayers, I'm just wasting my prayers. Why am I going to continue to keep praying this? Because I know this is what you're choosing. Thank God that Moses didn't do that. See, that's the heart of a shepherd. See, the heart of a shepherd, Moses knew, no, you're not going to the promised land because of your disobedience. But guess what? Help us to be content in the space that we're in. Watch this. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. What is Moses praying for right there? He's praying for purpose. He's praying for purpose. Moses is asking, Moses is asking God to give his people purpose while they are in the wilderness. Does it matter about their disobedience? He is still leveraging his position to be able to give his people purpose. They've been disobedient. They've been disobedient. And this, understand this disobedience too. They're, they're being disobedient while seeing the miracles of God. They're not being disobedient because they don't know the power of God. They are being disobedient knowing the power of God. And Moses, Moses still prays for his people. That was, when I seen that, it, it, it made me feel, it made me feel so, so, so good because I knew that I am a product. I am here. You are here because somebody was praying and shepherding you. That's just the bottom line. We are all products. You know how they say, I know you guys will know this, kids, you guys will get this. Um, if you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You guys have heard that, right? As you show me your friends, you know, stay away from this guy because if you are this girl, you know, that whole deal. But in reality, let me help you out though. In reality, you're, you're, the adults in the room, they're a product of the people that shepherd them. They are. Where they are in life is because someone prayed and shepherded them. Moses, no matter what, Moses chose. Hey, you know what, Lord? Yeah, we're not gonna, they're not going to get to see the promised land. But teach us the number of days. Why? Purpose. We need purpose. Think about this. I know I'm sticking right here, but think about this. Teach us the number of days. The Israelites, the Israelites at this point, knowing what Moses knows, at this point, we're not going into the promised land. Why don't we just rebel? Why don't we just run away, do our own thing? I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm denouncing all this. Why not do that then? Because to me, if the outcome is still going to be the same, I'm going to do me. If the outcome is still going to be the same, if I know no matter what I do, this is going to be the outcome, I'm just going to do me. But guess what? Moses knew that if, we could, if I could pray and get God to give me, help us find purpose in our living, guess what? He can keep them all on the same page. That's what a shepherd does. What does he do? He keeps the sheep together. See, if he doesn't, watch it, if he doesn't pray for that, how does he do it? How, I gotta give my people purpose now, knowing that they're not going into the promised land. We've already been in the wilderness for 40 years and God has been providing. I got to give my people purpose. A shepherd's prayer will always pray for purpose. That's why, guess what? That's why, I know, that's why when I come to my shepherd, Pastor Jordan, I know I can expect for him to give me purpose. I can expect that. Be and the reason why I can expect that is because I know that's the heart of a shepherd. Watch this. With my, watch this. With my children. When my kids come to me, I got to always turn them to their purpose. Well, I'm dealing with this dad. I'm dealing with, that ain't your purpose. That ain't got nothing to do with your purpose. This is what God is doing with you. That's what a shepherd does. But what we do, if we do not stay in prayer, we'll miss that as shepherds. We've already established that we're all shepherds. And guess what? We have to labor before God as such. Just as Moses did. Now Moses goes on in 13 and 14. 
He says, return, O Lord. How long have pity on your servants? I want you to understand, shepherds get tired. Return, O Lord. How long have pity on your servants? You know what I'm dealing with. These hard-headed people, you know what I'm dealing with. Lord, I'm tired. Just come back now. Just come right now, right? So he's tired. Look at the very next verse. Man, this is so good. Satisfy us in the morning with steadfast love. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Right? All our days. Satisfy us. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us and for as many years as we have seen evil. Lord, no matter what. Right? We've, we've seen a lot of, we've seen a lot of, you know, we've come out of Egypt. We've, you know, we've, we've, we've seen all these things and we've been persecuted for all these years. Lord, make us glad. How does that happen though? How does, how do we, how, watch this, because I'm going to show you where he's going to give direction and you got to hear it. Make us glad. Lord, make us glad. Now, guess what? Moses is saying, show us the fulfillment of our purpose. How do we do it? Watch this. How do we do it, Lord? We're not getting to go in. We're not going to get to go in. How do we do it? Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Now, watch, watch, listen. So it says, make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us and for as many years as we have seen evil, let your work be shown to your servants. He's giving direction. He's asking, Lord, we need direction. Even if we know our purpose, how do we do this? If we know, we, we don't know at this point in time, we don't know. We don't know how long we're going to have to wonder. We don't know. Guess what the, the Lord is saying? Turn towards your children. Turn towards your children. That's the direction. See, so Moses is praying. He's praying to God. He's like, Lord, give me direction for my people. That's the heart of a shepherd. We, no matter where we are, no matter what position we are in, no matter how long we've been in that position, none of that matters. What matters is that when you show up, you show up prayed up and you have prayed the heart of a shepherd because that's a powerful prayer because you don't know who's going to need you and when they need you. You don't know. I tell my wife all the time, I say, honey, people need you when they need you. And you have to respond accordingly. So what do I do? I pray. I pray continually. I pray, Lord, get, when I have the opportunity, Lord, when I have the opportunity to give purpose, ha, give me the courage to tell them. When I have a, watch this, when I have a opportunity to give direction, Lord, give me the courage to tell them. A lot of us, guess what we're doing? We're going into these spaces and we're not understanding that we're sent in these spaces and we're forfeiting the opportunity to be shepherds. We're forfeiting it. It's what we're doing. We're forfeiting it because we think and we have concluded that our only, um, the only way we can be a shepherd is it's got to be tied to a position. And that's a lie. That's a lie. That's not true. So right now, watch this. When you go into work and that guy that's, or that girl or whoever, your supervisor, whoever that's kind of nudging you or you don't really vibe with, start praying for him. Pray the heart of a shepherd. Lord, help me to help them find their purpose. Lord, give me the opportunity to give direction. And I guarantee you, those, that moment when it happens, it'll change, that relationship will change. That's what'll happen, that's just part of it. Now Moses, now Moses is, he's, he's praying and he's saying, Lord, I need direction for my people. Make us glad as many days, you know, I've been afflicted, we've went through our Lord. Let your work be shown to your servants. What are we gonna do, Lord? We in this, they're not going to the promised land. What, what are we going to do? This is what the Lord tells them. I mean, and this is what he, he cries out. And the Lord gives them direction. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. See, turn to your children. Your children are going in. You know, guys know the story. If you don't know, your children are going in. The children are going to go in. They're going to get to see the promised land. Joshua and Caleb went out and they spied it and the Lord said, you know, you might not see it. You won't see it. But guess what? Your children will see it. So the direction that Moses gets to give his people, focus on your children. Yeah, you won't see it, but focus on your kids. Yeah, you've messed up. And guess what? God is, now that we know that Jesus Christ has died on the cross, we know that Jesus is the redeemer of time. 
right? We can redeem the time. So for you that in here that have made some mistakes, that have hit in the mark, guess what? God can redeem the time for you. So guess what? There's time to get it right. But in this situation, the prayer that Moses is praying, he's getting direction. And guess what he's in? He said, let me turn to our children. Let me, let me focus on our kids. Let me, let me impart wisdom to our kids. That's the power of a shepherd's prayer. You get direction. And in direction, let me show you what, the next thing he prays. Man, this is so good. The next thing he prays. It was for me, because guess what? I've been being shepherd. I know that I wouldn't be before you had it not been for great men and women in my life. So that's why it feels so good to be able to minister this, because I can see it. I can see it. I'm like, man, Lord, had you not sent him, had you not sent her, my life would look totally different. And guess what? We all could do that. And people are praying for you that we don't even know. We don't even know. Now, this is this, that last piece. I told you there's three things, right? There's three things that a shepherd prays. He prays for purpose. Moses prayed for purpose. The second thing, he prayed for direction, right? We're going to turn to our children. The third thing he prayed is peace. I'm going to show you something. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Let the favor of of the Lord our God be upon us. In verse 17, let the favor, let me, uh, tell me a time where favor has showed up in your life and peace wasn't there. I'll wait. You can't. Favor and peace go hand in hand. I'll give you an example. i give you an example. They, um, I go to the doctor, they diagnose me. Oh, man. They diagnosed me. And they diagnosed me with this, um, with this bone cancer, okay? And when you hear bone cancer, it's kind of like, what? So, and I heard that. That's how I heard bone cancer, and I kind of was like, what in the world is this? But it's really, they call it, they call it a bone cancer because the blood that flows in your bones is kind of what's got the issue, where, where the issue lies, right? So... You know, they're telling me this, and I'm like, okay, well, they put me on this medicine. I hate the medicine. The medicine is terrible. I hate the medicine. I hate it. I hate it, right? So I got all these side effects, whatever. My face is broken out. I'm swollen. All these things, right? And um, my mom, she starts praying, and she says, you're going to come off that medicine. You, you, we, we're going to pray that God gets you off that medicine. So I was like, praise God, mom, you know, but, you know, I got to be wise, and this is what the doctors told me, so I'm going to use some wisdom in this, so, you know, I hear you, and I appreciate the faith, mom. Praise God, right? <laughs> so I'm taking the medicine. I'm taking the medicine. I'm taking the medicine. I go to my doctor. Me and this doctor just ain't seeing eye to eye, so I tell my wife, I said, hey, I'm getting, I ain't going back to the doctor. I don't care, I ain't going back to him. I ain't going, we gonna have to find somebody else. So sure enough, we go to somebody else, but we go to somebody else and I'm thinking, they gonna give me the same, it's gonna be the same situation. So I go to the next doctor. He kind of comes back, he tells me the same thing. He's trying to do the exact same thing. So now me and this doctor are not getting along. So now I'm on doctor three, I'm like, this is not good. Like, this ain't good, so maybe, you know, maybe it's a me problem, Frank. You know, the, the only variable in this situation that's the same is you. So maybe you are the problem, right? So I'm looking and I'm thinking, I'm like, what in the world? Like, all right, so there's a doctor here in Cleveland. I've been going to Chattanooga, going to Vanderbilt. I'm going to all these other places because surely Cleveland don't have nothing here that... I need, right? Because I got to go to the big city. Well, finally, one of my friends, his wife, she uh, works in the um, medical field, and she said, you, you know, he's a really good doctor. And I'm like, but she was like, but he ain't taking no more patients. As a matter of fact, you know, he's, he's not taking no more patients. So I'm like, okay. Like, huh. So I, she said, but I'm going to call him for you. She said, I'm going to call him for you. I'm, I'm going to get you an appointment. Do that. Yep, do that. <laughs> So she calls him, she calls him, sure enough, I get in. So I walk in the doctor's office, boom, he's telling me this, and he's like, he's saying all the right things. So I'm like, I done found my doctor. But in the midst of that, in the midst of that, this is what I wanted you to see. When, I, when favor showed up, peace showed up. See, when, I, when favor showed up, the favor of God that showed up, like, he's not taking any more uh, people. So he's not taking any more. 
So he's good. He's got his clientele. He's actually doing this and this. So he's not taking any more. So I get to go in now. And when I go in on favor, the favor of God is why I got to go in. I got to go in. And guess what he said? He said, yeah, I'll be your doctor. And this is what we're going to do. And this is what we're going to do. And guess what else? You're not going to take that medicine no more. That's, listen, that's the prayers of shepherds in my life. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. We're praying for you. That's people, listen, that's my community, my church family. They're saying, hey, I heard about the situation. I'm praying for you. See, I was being shepherded by all of you guys. And that's why I'm telling you why this is so important that we understand that the power of a shepherd's prayer changes things. It changes things. And for me and for you, guess what we have to do? We have to make sure that we stay outside of ourselves when we're praying. When we're praying. The last thing is, we know who's the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. He says it in John 10. John 10, 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And he, uh, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Lays down his life for the sheep. Lays down his life for the sheep. There are things that God is tugging on your heart to do. Because he knows you're supposed to be the one to shepherd certain people. And guess what? It's going to cost you to have to lay your life down. Get you off of your mind. You know what, Frank? Just because you don't feel good, get up and go anyway. So what? So what, you, so what that, 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 that you have this diagnosis? People are still needing Jesus. Now I know... And you know that I'm not God's first choice and I'm not God's last choice. And I understand that. But one of the things that I pray daily when I pray for people is purpose, direction, and peace. Why do you pray that, Frank? Because Moses did it and those that love me and shepherded me have done it. Those that love you and that shepherd you have done it. And you will too. You will too. So, what's my challenge to you? This is my challenge to you. We've been in this awesome opportunity of prayer. We've been praying for one another. We've been laying hands on one another. We've been speaking to one another. This is what I want you to do today. There's somebody here that you know. There's people here that you know that need to hear a word full of purpose, direction, and peace. Don't leave here today without telling somebody one of those three things. Whether you can give them purpose, whether you can give them direction, whether you can give them peace. Well, what does that look like? This week, I want you to know I'm praying for you. And God's going to do a great work with you. Well, why? how can you say that? Because I'm speaking the word. I'm not saying anything contrary to the word. So I can't speak peace to you today. You know what? That situation that you're in, you know what? God is going to use it. God is going to use it. That, that, that home situation that you're working through and you're trying to push through, guess what? Stay faithful. Stay faithful. God is going to use you. See, when people have purpose, direction, and peace, they stay in the fight. They stay in the fight. And that's what Moses understood. No matter what, even though we've rebelled and even though we've did all the wrong things and all these different things, he knew that if I can get my people to understand, to understand that their purpose and that there's direction and that there's peace, guess what they'll do? They'll stay in it and then they'll train their children. So when their children go into the promised land, they won't do what we did. That's the power of a shepherd's prayer. He is the good shepherd. If you know Jesus as your shepherd, then duplicate him. Pastor talked about that last week. Duplicate, imitate those that are doing God's work. As he said to Peter, feed my sheep. Tell someone today that you are praying for them, speaking encouraging words to them. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, 
Today, the good shepherd who laid down his life for you is making intercession for you right now. He's the advocate. I know you think, oh, well, I'm just here because somebody invited me. I'm here because, you know, I want to, you know, I want to get somebody off my back. But God knew you was going to be here. Your moment was prepared before the foundations of the world. Don't miss it. Don't miss it because of anything. Don't miss it. And understand, your boldness and your courage is shepherding those that are praying for you. That's what happens. When someone is praying for you, when somebody is praying for you and they, they, they see their prayer come to life, guess what that does? That gives them faith to do what? To continue to trust God. So your courage and your braveness and your willingness to obey God in this moment speaks to other people. And it's important, it's important that you don't miss it. Because if you miss it, it's not guaranteed that you have another one. That's what's real. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you because that's what's real. You're not promised tomorrow, we're not. But we thank God for it, right? But we're not promised. This message of shepherding, this, this prayer, this powerful prayer that Moses prays, I pray that you will see people where you are. You know, Pastor always says to me, Pastor Jordan always says, you know, live your life on mission. He says that all the time. We live our life on mission. We live our life on mission. But you can't live your life on mission if you don't see people the way God sees people. So, hey, watch this. And God is the great shepherd. So we have to see people full of purpose, willing to give direction, and willing to give peace. I know pastors are going to come, and I want you guys to know that I'm grateful to be able to stand before you. There's no greater honor than be able to minister the word of God. There's no greater honor than to be able to preach the word of God. And just as Moses shared his heart and as Moses cried out before God in this powerful prayer, I pray that you don't give up hope. I'm praying for those that you love. I pray that you will continue to give direction to those that you love and those that you don't know. Because you're going to encounter some people that you don't know and God will continue to give you direction for them. Lord, I thank you. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to minister to your sheep, Lord. I pray, Father God, that our hearts, Father God, would be full of purpose, direction, and peace, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Father, that, that in this moment, Father, I thank you that you would give courage to those that, that need courage, Father God, that don't know you, that may have never encountered you, Father God. I pray, Father, that you would give them the opportunity, Father, to come forth. And Lord, I thank you, Father God, that you're going to give us opportunity to continue, Father God, to feed your sheep. And Lord, we'll give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen.